node is a point at which two or more branches are connected. And like we have always discussed in the class, when we have a node and when we have many branches connected to a node, we have a rule that all the currents entering a node must be equal to the currents leaving the node, irrespective of the number of currents at both ends. So, and that actually explains what we refer to as catch-off current law. The basic rule for node analysis actually obeys the catch-off current law. And that simply means the summation of all the currents around a particular node must be equal to zero. That can also be interpreted as saying that the current entering a node must be equal to the current leaving that particular node. So uh, there are two major representations you might want to pay attention to. The first one is the circuit representation of node. The circuit representation of a node is usually given as it's, it's, it's usually given like this. So uh, for some of you who will be dealing with lots of circuits. This is how to represent a node in a circuit. You can see a current IN coming in, and then you can see a point. At this particular point here, you can see I1 originating and going out, I2 originating from that point and going out, and I, I, IN minus one, which is like, you know, uh, depending the number of currents that we do have, you know, as many, many of them as possible can originate from this point and go, go up. Also, uh, for some of you who are going to be focusing on power, you know, as you progress in the studies, Power representation of a node can also, you know, is, is also an important subject you might want to you know, understand. So, for, for, power, for power system representation, you will find out that we have bars. Okay? We have a bar, not just a, a point. So, on that particular bar, that bar will represent your node. So, you can see current I1 originating from that bar, I2 originating up to, depending on the number of currents you have, the last current originating from that bar. And you can see the, you know, incoming current IN going to that particular bar. So this entire bar, if you circle it from the top down like this, represents a node. If you can see my cursor. Now, what is a ground node? A ground node is a point at which the voltage is assumed to be zero. Okay, I remember we mentioned this in the class too some time ago. A ground node is a point at which the voltage is assumed to be zero. Okay, all other voltages take their references with respect to this ground node and what we usually use to represent the ground node the symbol we usually use to represent the ground node is what you can see here you can see these three bars here the longer one and then the middle one and then a smaller part with you know just uh, a connection right on top of it okay so we use this to represent the ground node so if you take this to a circuit and you check it here you will see here this is how it is connected to a circuit this is a ground node and the voltage at the ground node is always equal to zero it is important. We have mentioned this in class two before, so but it's important to talk about it again. Now that we're talking about the nodal analysis, the voltage at the ground node is always equal to zero. Okay. So uh, looking at this, for some of you who have been to the lab before, uh, and probably who will still go to the lab, but this is this is like uh, a multimeter or a voltmeter. It could also be an ammeter but let's take this as a voltmeter let's say you want to take voltage in a circuit the black point is always referred to as the arc all right and that arc is always referred to as the ground node this black point here is always referred to as the arc or the ground and in many cases that is where you connect your negative to. and then the red point is the place where you connect the positive end of the voltage so the black terminal is going to be your ground node and then where you measure either your current or voltage or whatever you want to measure from is going to be from uh, the red cable. What you do first of all when you want to analyze a circuit using the nodal analysis method is that you have to know what your reference node is rather. So once you identify your reference node, all the other nodes will have to take their key from the reference node. So select your reference node and define the voltage at each of the non-reference nodes with respect to the reference node. Call these the node voltage. In nodal analysis method, analyze the node voltages first and then derive their circuit variables. And those variables could be the currents and voltages. All right. And then from there, you can move on. Let's try to check this analysis out. Here is a circuit given to us. As you can see here, you have uh, a circuit with how many parameters? This is a parameter here. You have, you can see here, we have this resistor here. Yeah? We have another resistor here, and then we have another resistor. Okay, so 
at this particular point here, this is our reference node, by the way. So you can see it is connected to the ground. Yeah, so it's a ground node. Okay, this is the node one now. This is V1 will then be the node voltage at node one. This is the node two, and then you know, the voltage at node two then becomes V2. And then you, you can see the, 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 the references, the, the polarities are defined. You can see positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative. Okay, so you can see the current is flowing from V1 to V2. So the current is flowing from V1 this direction to V2. And as you know, this is our you know, a resistor, a load resistor. In node analysis method, you analyze the node voltages first and then derive the other circuit variables. Let's try to do that right now. This particular voltage across R, how would you find it? It is between V1 and V2, as you can see. So since the current is going from V1 to V2, so this V would be equal to V1 minus V2, as you can see that. So the voltage drop across the resistance between two nodes will be uh, the difference between the voltages in those nodes. Okay, and you have to take, pay attention to the direction of current. So that would that would help you know which one is supposed to be positive or which one is the bigger one or which one is the smaller one, which one should be subtracted from the other. So V here in this case, because current is moving, current is flowing from V1 to V2, our V would be V1 minus V2. If the current were to be flowing from V2 to V1, our V would be equal to V2 minus V1. Please pay attention to that. Or the polarities are going to change somehow. All right. So if you want to find the uh, current flowing this through R, which is given as I, it will be given as V over R, as far as Ohm's law is concerned. So V over R, and we have found our V to be V1 minus V2. So you can easily replace this V with V1 minus V2. So that becomes V1 minus V2 over R. And you do know that uh, uh, the ratio of our R, 1 over R is usually given as is given as G, where G is our you know uh, conductance. Conductance is G. But this one over R here, you can replace it with G. So instead of writing one over R, you write G here and then it's equal to V1 minus V2. So as you can see here, our I can be obtained by saying that I equal to G, V1 minus V2, or R equal to V1 minus V2, all divided by, by R. So uh, some there are circuits that would have current sources, there are circuits that would have the current sources combined with resistances in them. So I want to look at how we relate to those circuits and how we can uh, how we can how we can treat them. Here is an example of one of those circuits. Okay, we will find out that in this circuit we have two current sources. This is the first current source IG1. This is the second current source IG2. Right? You can see that we have a reference node. Okay, so all of these, we circle all of these from here based on the first slide I explained to you guys uh, on the power system representation of nodes. You will find that all of these represent a single node. So this is our node 3, it is picked as our reference node. Also, this is going to be our node 1. All If you, if you, if you circle everything here, this can represent your node 1. All right. Also, this can be your node 2. If you circle everything here, this can be your node 2. So. This is the equivalence of this particular circuit. From what I just explained, all everything here is node one. That is what is put together here to be B to be node one. Everything here, you know, just after R2 to this particular point is node two. That is why it is represented with just one point here as node two. And then you can see your R2 somewhere between these two nodes. Okay, like I also told you too, everything here can be represented too as one single node. That is why you can see this coming down here as one single node. Everything here as one single node comes here as one node three. And since we have our sources here, in the current sources here, you can see that we have sources still taking and maintaining their positions. You know, here. So this circuit and this circuit are equivalent to each other, and then they give you an understanding of how you can easily treat you know, you know complex circuits with you know, many branches and so on and so forth. Now, if we take it a step further from here, what you want to do is to take KCL at node one. If you take KCL at node one, okay, this is your node one. Don't forget. Also, this is your you know node one. Yeah. So if you take KCL at node one. What we normally do, you know, we have a conversion that says that if the current, when a current is entering a node, we use negative polarity and the negative sign, and then when it, when the current is, is is leaving a node, we use the positive polarity or positive signs. So what you will see here is that uh, the current I one is actually leaving this node. 
So you have plus I1 rather because it is leaving the node. So you have plus I1 plus I2 because both of them are leaving the node. The only current entering the node is IG1. So that is going to have a negative sign. That is why you have I1 plus I2 minus IG1. And the summation of all those according to Cartier's law must be equal to zero. Summation of all the currents around the particular node must be equal to zero. So that is exactly why we have I1 plus I2 minus IG1 equal to zero. If you have your KCL like this and you want to express your KCL in terms of voltages or in terms of the node voltages that we have, this is how we will treat it. Okay. For I1, I1 would be equal to V1 over R1, isn't it? I1 would be equal to V1 over R1. Don't forget that this reference voltage, the ground voltage here is zero. Don't forget. The ground voltage here is zero. So normally, the, the, the current passing through R1 under normal circumstances would be V1 minus zero divided by R1. You could you just say that I1 is equal to V1 over R1. And you know that R1, 1 over R1 is the same thing as G1, all right? So you can just replace the 1 over R1 as G1. So you have G1, V1. Yeah. Okay, now for R2 now. It is going to be the voltage across R2 divided by R2 itself. So what is the voltage across R2? I gave you a convention when we started. There is V1 here, there is V2 here, V1 at node 1, V2 at node 2, R2 is between node 1 and node 2. So the voltage across R2 would be, depending on the direction of the current, V1 minus V2. In okay. this case, the current is moving from V1 to V2. So I2 would be V1 minus V2 divided by R2. The current passing through this that is exactly what it is here okay so divided by r2 will simply mean that we have one over r2 somewhere one over r2 would be the same thing as g2 that is why we have g2 here into bracket b1 minus v2 you know here all right and then what else do we have here we have minus ig1 here so we have minus ig1 here equal to equal to zero all right, so uh, that's what we have done for KCL at node one. If we do the same thing at node two, we can apply KCL at node two. Uh, this is node two and this is node two. You can just be playing with both circuits at the same time to see what is going on, okay? At node two, which current is going into node two? I2, so that means I2 is gonna be negative, right? Because all current is going into a particular node based on our, you know, our notations and that we have decided to, to use is going to be negative so we have minus i2 here uh, which currents are leaving node 2 ig2 is leaving node 2 i3 is also leaving node 2 okay so that simply means that we have minus i2 which is entry negative those leaving would be positive it be i plus i3 plus ig2 so adding all of them together according to catch ups our uh, current law will be equal to zero the same thing we did for node 1 is what we're going to do for node 2. We convert everything at the node voltages. This current equation will you know, you know, write it in form of node voltages. So for I2, what you would have is G2, V2 minus V1, and then you have G3, V2 plus I, G2. Okay, so if you do that, if you rearrange this first equation here at node 1, G1, V1, that means you expand this bracket and then you collect like, like terms together. What you will have is this. You have G1 plus G2, V1 minus G2, V2 equal to I, G1. Also, if you, if you rearrange equation at node 2, this equation, that means you expand this bracket. So all the V2s, you collect them to all the, all the V2s, you collect them to one side and all the V1s, you collect them to one side and then you get it to IG2. This is what you have. So um, well, the coefficient of all V2s are G2 plus G3. If you, you know, this is just simple mathematics, simple arithmetic, if you do that. And then you have quotient of V1, V1, minus G2, V1, minus G2. And then you equate everything to minus I, IG2. <coughs> What we see here is sum of conductances connected to node one is what you see here for equation for node one. We will see that all the conductances connected to node one is what you have here multiplied by V1. So that simply means that in this particular case, we only have two conductances connected to, to, to node one. That is why you are adding two conductances. In some examples that we are going to treat, and probably some you will find in your examinations, you will see that there may be three conductances connected to a particular node. There may be four conductances connected to a particular node. What you do is that you add all the conductances. It does, it's not just two. Okay, if there are three, that means you are adding three conductances together. If there are four conductances connected to node one, you add all the four conductances together. Okay, so if you do that, you multiply it by V1 minus. What you will see here 
in the negative conductance connected to node 1 and node 2 as you can see here okay so you can see we have node 1 and node 2 here so minus the negative conductance connected to our node 2 okay so this is g2 connected to node 2 and then g2 equal to what you have here is the current entry node 1 equal to current entry node 1 all right this is, looks more like a basic equation that you can use for every complex circuit you don't need to memorize it you just need to understand the concept that is being explained here. so for the second equation you will what you will find here is a negative conductance of node one negative conductance connecting node one and node two okay multiplied by voltage one plus the sum of conductances connected to node two because this second equation is dealing with node two Okay, so plus the sum of all the conductances connected to node 2 equal to minus IG1. I minus IG1 would represent the current entering node 2 in the real sense. Okay, okay, so what you will notice here between node 1 analysis and node 2 and KCL analysis is that it's just like the interchange positions. You can see some of all conductances multiplied by the three one, some of all conductances are node 2 multiplied by node 3 is what you have here. You can see minus g 2 v 2 here simply means negative of conductance connected to node 2. Here you see negative of conductance connected to node 1 here, right? from node 2 with respect to node 2 here. All right, so this is equal to IG1, this is equal to IG2, current entry for node. So uh, this is very important for you to use them. Okay, like I said, you don't have to memorize them. Once you understand what you're doing and what's going on, you can just use them in an easy way or easier way. You know, if you want to just keep your understanding straight, you can just work from here and see you get to where you're going without having any issues.